Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of a congregation that, that recognizes uh, the reality of ministry servants. Uh, you, you have that booklet, and I'm going to ask you, if you don't have, if you have it, to, to take a look at it. I'll, I'll introduce a little bit of each of the men, because what's, what's the message that comes through there is that this men, these men were used by God in an incredible variety of ministries, all of them based in parish, but all of them way beyond that in, in other ministries, uh, in education, in social work, in all kinds of things, and that's worthwhile. You read the text from Ephesians 4. That's really what we celebrate today. We, we celebrate an anniversary of ministry means we're celebrating the faithfulness of God, who in his love and in his mercy chooses to give gifts for ministry. God gives gifts to his church. He gives gifts in the shape of of people. God promises that, pastors, teachers, evangelists. If St. Paul were writing today, I think he would include church musicians, even those with those wonderful guitars. Uh, those are all gifts that God uses for ministry. What we celebrate then is the faithfulness of a God who continues to give abundant gifts to serve and bless his people. It always amazed me and uh, I'm privileged to have 53, 56 years of ministry under my belt myself. It always amazed me that God chose to do ministry this way. I mean, why, why would he use people, of all things, people, human, failable, mistake-prone people? There's a lot of ways God could have done ministry. He could have done the angels. Wouldn't that have been something? You know, they did pretty well at Christmas. And they did pretty well at Easter. But God chose to use people. He takes ordinary people. Ask any church worker's spouse if you doubt. Ask my spouse. They're very, very ordinary. But God reaches out. He touches them with his grace. He gives them and he equips them with gifts. And then uses them to do the extraordinary things in ministry. He's the one doing it all. It's not the pastor. God is the one doing it. He calls, he equips, he gives gifts for ministry. And the gifts are given for one reason. They're given for you. They're given to equip the people of God, that's you and that's me, for the work of ministry that God gives us to do. Ministry isn't just the property of the clergy. They're only part of the equation. They're the equippers. Folks, we are the equipees. And, and one of the things that this booklet does so wonderfully is it shows you how God used these servants to equip. If you want to open it and take a look, that would be one way to do it. I think uh, uh, Pastor Bearwall comes up first on the booklet. For him, it meant campus ministry a challenging parish ministry uh, in uh, Alton, Illinois. Uh, in the early 60s, it was the first integrated, racially integrated congregation of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. A challenging but blessed ministry. Then campus ministry. And then after campus ministry, campus ministry administration on a national basis. There was at a time three uh, bodies, the Lutheran Church in America, the American Lutheran Church, and the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod that did ministry on campuses together. And Pastor Verwall was in a plane most of the time, all over the place, supporting those ministries on campuses from east to west. And then those years here at St. Mark, known to so many of you, 20 years. And then, and then when he retired from St. Mark's, he came to work for the Northern Illinois District part-time as assistant to the, past, to the president. Three, president is kind of like a bishop for some with other church orientation, uh, although not quite those of us who are, have been presidents would tell you. Uh, but it's very similar in that you're responsible for some 220 congregations, and Reuben became a wonderful assistant. Then if you look uh, in, in the booklet, the next one that comes up, 
is uh, Pastor Beckman. And Pastor Beckman, by the way, I don't think made it this, this service. He was in the hospital overnight, uh, just kind of looking into some things that were a little troubling, uh, no real danger. His sons were here, uh, and we're grateful for that. Uh, Pastor Bill Beckman was the principal at Valley Lutheran High here in St. Charles for many years. Uh, very, much, very much a part of my life and our family's life. My wife served as an administrative assistant. All five of our kids had their academic life start at Valley. And I think Valley was a pretty good launching point because among my five kids, there are four masters and one doctorate. So Valley didn't let them down at all. And, and Bill was a great part of that, and, and we're very grateful. Notice uh, all of the additional graduate study that he did. And of course, served in parish ministry, uh, teaches Bible classes, uh, uh, received numerous awards. Uh, they're always, always good to note. Then take a look at Dr. View and how the Lord used him to equip the saints. Parish ministry was his start as well. He earned a master's in community mental health, if you noticed, and then a, a doctor of ministry degree uh, in marriage and family counseling. And those gifts became a part of how he equipped the saints as he used the resources of that academic background to serve people in, in God's church, supporting them, caring for them, lifting them up, helping them through difficult times. It's really all equipping the saints. Then uh, Dr. Ritt. Dr. Ritt uh, came out of this, this northern Illinois district of ours. St. John Algonquin was his home church, right kind of up the road, up 31. Well, quite a ways, but a ways up 31. Uh, and he began his ministry also with campus ministry and then parish ministry and then parish ministry um, here uh, in, in the Chicagoland area. Um, Trinity Lutheran Church in, in Villa Park, uh, actually an English district congregation, and that's another discussion, but it's, it's a group of people uh, that back in 1911 didn't want to sing, didn't want to sing and pre and preach in German, so they became Lutheran, but an English district Lutheran. All the rest of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod was still speaking German, and that, and that district that he was a part of uh, and he was elected to be their bishop and their president, uh, was, was all had him traipsing like Pastor Bearwall all over the country because they have congregations in Illinois, in Missouri, in Wisconsin, in Minnesota, in Arizona. Um, and I think I probably missed a state or two, um, but they're not checking on me. Equipping the saints has a, a wide, wide variety of impacts on the church. Pastors, teachers, church workers are not the only gifts God gives to the church. St. Paul was not writing these, this epistle to the Ephesian pastoral conference. He was writing it to the Ephesian church, the people of God. He was writing to the whole church. The ministry belongs not to the clergy. They're a part of it. The, the ministry belongs to the people of God. You and I who are baptized into the faith and who are nurtured in the faith in word and sacrament. Pastors and professional church workers are called to equip us, to help us, to support us, to guide us, to lead us, to teach us. God's people need to be equipped for the ministry God has called you to here at St. Mark's and every place. You see, those whom God has called to faith, he calls and equips to function as his faithful people by his grace. This day that focuses so, so wonderfully on the pastoral office also is a call to all of us, all of us who are non-pastors, to call on all of us to recognize our call in baptism to the church and that means to be equipped for ministry as the church and rededicate yourselves. Here at St. Mark's, if this is your place of worship or wherever, or wherever God has called you and placed you to be his own, serving him in all that you are 
and all that we do. For all of us, pastors and people alike, the call to faith is a call by God's grace to function as his faithful people. To that end, God bless you, God keep you in his care, and all four of our celebrants would join me in saying amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>